and I'm going to do another raw review for September the 2nd, 2013. I want to say I'm sorry about not doing the, the review last week for raw, but I had a lot of things going on last week, so I wasn't able to get to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into uh, this week's raw. Um, the show started off with uh, Triple H in the ring. Um, he was standing there, and then uh, he introduced Randy Orton. Randy Orton came down to the ring. Um, Randy Orton basically cut a promo about, um, you know, protecting the company and, you know, him being the face of the company and that he, you know, he's, if he, if he's disrespected, then, you know, the WWE is disrespected. Uh, they showed footage from SmackDown where, um, after Daniel Bryan's match, Randy Orton and the Shield beat him down and Randy Orton sprayed, spray paint on Daniel Bryan that said no. And then, uh. Uh, Orton went to go on to play uh, a question and answer session, so to speak, too, with the crowd. Kind of similar to what Daniel Bryan normally does. Um, he went, you know, he was asking, basically he kind of alluded to the fact that uh, Daniel Bryan should give up his opportunity to face him at Night of Champions and that uh, that Daniel Bryan wasn't uh, able to beat him in a match. Uh, then Triple H got on, got back on the mic again, and he cut a promo and he said that, uh, the audience was confusing Daniel Bryan and that uh, he's worried about the health of, of Daniel Bryan. And then he went on to compare Daniel Bryan to Doink the Clown, which I thought was kind of funny. And he says that uh, Daniel Bryan will never be WWE Champion, but that's okay. <laughs> and then uh, he, say, he said Daniel Bryan can go after the, the European Championship or maybe even the Cruiserweight Championship. And then uh, Daniel Bryan came out and interrupted him. Uh, got a good reception as usual. Uh, some Daniel Bryan chants. Um, Daniel Bryan went on to say that he thought that the only clowns he'd see was uh, the two that were standing in the ring, referring to Randy Orton and Triple H. Uh, he, he did say he was uh, honored to be uh, compared to Doink the Clown, but Doink never got uh, a reception like he, he you know he gets like on, on a weekly basis. So. Um, and then uh, he basically called Triple H. He said Triple H wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't a man, and that he became a corporate sellout. And he said that uh, Randy Orton gave up on the WWE title until it was handed to him. And he he basically said that he worked for everything he had to get, and Randy Orton was given everything. I thought that was a good promo. I thought it was a good opening segment. Um, it basically ended with Triple H saying that um, that he wanted Daniel Bryan. He said that Brian, Daniel Bryan should be mad at at the Big Show. You know, if, if he should be mad at anybody, he should be mad at the Big Show or himself. And he announced that in the main event of the show, that Big Show and Daniel Bryan would go one on one. Um, I thought it was good, 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 uh, good opening segment. Uh, okay, opening segment. I thought Daniel Bryan did. Did uh did really well on his uh, promo, starting to show off. I thought the uh, the Triple H Randy Orton stuff was was good, and I know a lot of people have been wondering about the whole Big Show Ironclad contract thing, and I think this episode of Raw kind of addressed the Ironclad uh, situation with the Big Show uh, in a lot of in a lot of degrees. So I thought the show altogether was good because it did address that, and a lot of people had concerns about. The reasoning behind Big Show not taking action, uh, which I'll get to later on uh, in the video. And then uh, they went to commercial break and came back, and Randy Orton and Triple H were backstage walking, and they were just talking. And then they they ran across Cody Rhodes, and Cody Rhodes was being real respectful of them, and they basically said that he had a a match, I mean, a wedding coming up, and that they was gonna give him a, a wedding gift, even though they weren't invited to the wedding. And that they were gonna let Cody Rhodes fight Randy Orton in a match on Raw tonight. Uh, Cody Rhodes said he was honored to to face you know Randy Orton that he he was honored to get an opportunity like that. Um, and but Triple H then told him that you know if he lost the match then his career would be in jeopardy. So basically he was in a must win situation. Uh, then uh, Fandango versus Miz. Uh, Fandango and Miz, they, they had a few going on for the last few weeks since uh, SummerSlam. Uh, started at SummerSlam uh, while Miz was hosting SummerSlam. Then Fandango and I had a couple backstage things. 
uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, uh, Fandango attacked the Miz and during his match, and you know they've they've been having a, a ongoing thing with them. Uh, the match was okay. Uh, during during the match, Fandango got his nose broke, and they fixed it during the commercial break. Um, the the medical crews uh, attended to him, and he was able to continue the match. But uh, I thought it was kind of weird that uh, Fandango tapped out so quickly in that match. Uh, so the Miz defeated Fandango by submission with the figure four leg lock, and Fandango like immediately like quick quickly quickly tapped out like as soon as it was latched on. And you know I mean I understand that this wasn't a feud that could carry on to Night of Champions because uh, obviously you know these guys are in championship contention or champions themselves. But you know, um, it, it was still kind of surprising to see Fandango tap out so quickly. I'm not liking, really liking the way that the WWE's going, the direction they're going with Fandango. It seems like they're gonna start jobbing them out, and you know, a lot of people probably are kind of have mixed feelings about the Fandango character. Character, but personally, I think uh, Fandango's a, a good wrestler. Like he's a good wrestler, and I think that he has a lot of potential. You knowing his stuff from. NXT as Johnny Curtis, I think you know he he definitely definitely has a lot of potential, and I would like to see the WWE do something with him uh, in the future. Um, yeah, it was it was surprising to see uh, him tap out so quickly in that match, um, but nothing special about this match. It was just a, a typical WWE um, Monday night match. It was Friday night match. So uh, next they had a backstage segment with Daniel Bryan was backstage uh, preparing. And then Booker T came back there and confronted Daniel Bryan and told him that he can't take on the McMahons and that he's basically jeopardizing his career if he tries to continue to fight against the McMahons. And Daniel Bryan wasn't trying to hear it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Dolph Ziggler and had a, a match against an unnamed opponent, a surprise, a mystery opponent. And before the match could get started, Dean Ambrose came through the crowd and attacked Dolph Ziggler from behind. He beat down Dolph Ziggler, and then Dolph Ziggler's opponent would come out, which his opponent was right back. The bully, the big guy, the bully. Anyways, uh, it was a pretty short match. Um, uh, right back dispatched the Dolph Ziggler, you know, pretty quickly after uh, a little short rally, uh, you know, punches uh, and, and a little comeback. Ziggler tried to make, and then right back finished them off. I uh, thought it was. I thought it was okay to do it, and I, and I I really want to mention that I like what they're doing with the Ryback character now. Um, I wasn't a fan of the Ryback character from the beginning when he first started and everything. I mean, I was okay with it because obviously I like to see a uh, new talent. I, I think most people do like to see new talent uh, show up on TV, but I wasn't I wasn't a fan of it. I just thought it was kind of generic. But I do I have to admit that I do like what they're doing with him, the whole bully stuff, like a lot of the backstage segments they've been doing. I think are really funny, and I like what they're doing with his character, man. He seems really comfortable, and he's he's doing his thing. And <clears throat> excuse me. Um, uh, one thing I want to note was he got some really loud Goldberg chants when he first came out, and uh, during the match he got some "You Can't Wrestle" chants, and you know that's about it. Um, nothing special, just Triple H once again sending a, sending a message to the rest of the locker room. Um, then we had Triple H and Stephanie, they were backstage and, and then Brad Maddox came back there and uh, he told them that the, the big show refused to fight Daniel Bryan and Stephanie said she would handle it and he said, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go tell him. She said, no, this is going to be public. So, and then they showed a Los Matadores um, promo and then went to commercial. At the commercial, Stephanie came back out to the ring <clears throat> and then she introduced the big show. She basically aired his dirty laundry. She told the world, and this is what I was talking about earlier about them addressing the ironclad contract situation because they mentioned the ironclad contract several times throughout the night. Uh, Stephanie basically told the world that the Big Show was broke, that he had made some bad investments during the recession and that he needed the money. And if he breached his contract by not doing what he's supposed to do, that he wouldn't see a dime of the money that's in his ironclad contract. And they, you know, he basically had to do what they told him to do, or or else. So this is this was WWE's way of uh, addressing the situation with the Big Show. 
I know a lot of wrestling fans, uh, online fans, internet fans, had concerns about you know why Big Show wouldn't do anything with Daniel Bryan's situation. Why wouldn't he help out if he got an ironclad contract? You know, Daniel Bryan's obviously understandable that you know he if he doesn't care if he gets fired, you know he would he would fight back against the men's. But why wouldn't Big Show fight back? So this was a good way for the WWE to approach that situation, and um, that's what they did. Uh, Stephanie basically just just said that he had to he had to go. And uh, during the commercial break and on the WWE app, uh, Big Show flipped out backstage and you know broke some stuff and knocked over furniture. And then uh, they had 3MB versus the Primetime Players. Uh, typical match. It was a good match. The Primetime Players went over clean in this match. Uh, Titus O'Neil got the win. Got the pin for all in the match. Uh, I thought it was okay match. Nothing special. Um, it wasn't a bad match, so I'm good with it. Um, then Brad Maddox was on the phone backstage. And Paul Heyman came out and came back there and said, you know, that he was basically said that he was mad about the match. And then Triple H interrupted Paul Heyman and said that he approved the match. And then Triple H went on to say that, you know, basically he was in a win-win situation because Paul Heyman always seemed to weasel his way out of situations and that this situation at Night of Champions with Hammer Curtis Axel facing CM Punk in a tag team or a two on one elimination match that it was you know, not a good chance of Paul Haven being able to weasel his way out of it. And he said if he was to weasel his way out of the match, then, you know, more props to him. But either way, you know, he, he's going to win. Um, and then they showed a little promo of Bray Wyatt and uh, the Kane situation. Bray Wyatt did his thing. I think Bray Wyatt's awesome on uh, his promo skills. Uh, I love his little uh, big net still, baby Sean. Um, I mean, I, th I just think the guy does a good job, and I think it's going to be uh, great for the WWE in the future. Then they had the Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton match for basically Cody Rhodes' career was on a line. Um, man, uh, I thought it was a good match, man. Like, Cody Rhodes definitely put forth a good effort, and the crowd was into it. Uh, uh, as WWE shown on TV, the, the Twitter verse was behind it, and they were talking about it and tweeting about it. Uh, Cody Rhodes hit Co hit uh, uh, Randy Orton with the crossroads, and Randy Orton kicked out. Uh, Randy Orton ultimately uh, went on to uh, hit the RKO on Cody Rhodes and win the match. I thought it was a good match. I liked it. Um, uh, probably one of the better matches of the whole show. Um, uh, and then Triple H came on to tell Cody Rhodes that he was fired uh, in a very nonchalant way, just like I'm telling you. <laughs> so, but I, I mean, it was what it was. Uh, after that, they went to commercial again, and after the commercial break, they went to the CM Punk segment. CM Punk came out and addressed the WWE Universe. We all know CM Punk is a promo genius, but... Uh, you know, he, he came out once again and did a good job on his promo against Paul Heyman. And ultimately, he promised to break Paul Heyman's face at Night of Champions. So, you know, they were basically selling the point that if you watch Night of Champions, you'll get to see Paul Heyman get his ass whooped. So, I, I mean, I, CM Punk, he does a good job every time he, he puts his mouth on the mic. And I think, once again, you know, he did a good job. Then they had a triple threat number one contenders match for the Divas Championship. Now, last week, I didn't get to address this because I didn't do a review of last week's show. But AJ cut a promo on the Divas of Total Divas, and I thought it was a great promo. And I think most of the fans in WWE agree. Uh, she basically ripped the Divas apart. Uh, and, and the WWE showed uh, a clip of, of that that promo she cut. Uh, in the match, they had Naomi versus Natalia versus Brie Bella. And uh, AJ came out and she was on commentary. Uh, they didn't really get to get too much into the match. During the match, AJ ran in and she attacked the Divas. So causing the DQ. And then all the Divas attacked her and beat her down and just left her in the ring, laid out. 
And during the commercial break, um, Stephanie was confronted by Natalia, Naomi, and uh, Brie Bella. And Stephanie told them that she would make a fatal four-way at Night of Champions, which I'm happy about, man. If you watch any of my videos or most of my videos, um, you, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Divas Wrestling and giving Divas opportunities in WWE. And I like the show. Total Divas. I just watched the last episode uh, this past week, and I, I mean, I like the show. I, I I really enjoy watching it, and I really enjoy the fact that the WWE Divas are getting more time on television, because you know, you think a year ago, a couple months ago, whatever, like Divas weren't being showcased at all. You know, like they they got a minute, two minute match, and that was it. You know, so the fact that they're being showcased, even if it's still on a limited basis is a good thing in my opinion. I'm excited to see Naomi, you know, get in contention for it, even if it's a fatal four way, which I think is still awesome. Um, I'm excited to see these guys, all of them, Natalia, Brie, all of them, uh, compete for the Divas Championship. Um, I would, you know, still like to see AJ continue to run on with the Divas Championship, which I think she will. But I, I just think that this is just a great opportunity for the Divas to continue to grow and, you know, more opportunities for them. You know, like if you're going to join the WWE, you got to have something to strive for. If, if you're a woman or a diva, then, you know, at, at a certain point in WWE, it's like no point for you to be a diva in WWE because you didn't have anything that, you know, you could accomplish. So uh, I think it's great what they're doing. And I hope they continue to do it and then push it even further and further in the future. Um, and then after that, they had Damian Sandow versus RVD with Ricardo Rodriguez. Uh, a rematch for SmackDown. Uh, RVD beat Damian Sandow pretty decisively on SmackDown. Uh, this time, I think they had a, a little bit better of a match than they had on SmackDown. Uh, not great, but I thought it was still a good match. Um, during the match, uh, Alberto Del Rio came out. And you know, it caused a slight distraction, but uh, ultimately RVD went over clean and hit the five star frog splash and pinned Damon Sandow. Um, I just want to mention the situation with Carlos Rodriguez and uh, RVD, the, the pairing of those two, because I mean, that's an odd pairing to me. It's kind of weird. Um, like, I'm not really a big fan of Alberto Del Rio, I think. Uh, he's he's boring. I think he's not really that entertaining, and I can't wait to see the WWE go a different route with the World Heavyweight Championship, somewhere where the championship starts to feel more credible again. I don't see that happening no time soon, and I don't see uh, Alberto Del Rio uh, dropping the belt anytime soon. But uh, I'm you know I hope you know eventually you know they. They, they get some credibility back on that championship. Um, I, I've been a long time a fan of SmackDown, so hopefully the WWE will. And they have been. I think they have been focusing on SmackDown uh, lately. They've been continuing the storylines from Raw and kind of bringing them to the SmackDown stage. And Triple H, Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan, all these guys have been appearing on SmackDown. So um, hopefully they will start to give some better focus towards SmackDown and towards the, the World Heavyweight Championship. But as far as uh, Ricardo Rodriguez and RVD go, uh, I'm not I'm not a fan of it. I'm, I'm expecting uh, Ricardo to go back to Alberto Del Rio, because if not, let's face it, you know, Alberto Del Rio is just not really that entertaining. I think he's a good wrestler. Don't get me wrong. I think I think he's very talented in the ring. I think he's a great technician, but I think I just think he's boring, like very very boring and dull uh, performer overall so hopefully those two will get back together and they could start something you know I heard rumors that uh, Rey Mysterio should be returning soon so I'm expecting maybe they might do an angle with Rey Mysterio and uh, Del Rio but either way uh, they need to do something better than what they've been doing over the last few weeks because the last few months you know like I, Del Rio is just not doing it for me so hopefully in the future they can pick up and do something better. Uh, Damian Sandow, man, I, I think this guy's really talented on the mic, especially. And I think he has a lot of potential. Hopefully, you know, he will be uh, a great 
world champion one day. So um, I, I definitely would, definitely would prefer Damian Sandow over Alberto Del Rio at this point. Um, actually, I probably would prefer almost anybody over Alberto Del Rio at this point. But hopefully, you know, WWE gets everything in check with that for, that situation because I think they've been doing a good job with the, the WWE Championship situation. Even though, of course, you know, there's things that they can improve on. Um, all right, let me, let me go ahead and get through the show. Um, next, they had Cody Rhodes, who's backstage, getting escorted out of the building. And Josh Matthews came up to him and started asking some dumbass questions. And he even asked him, like, if your, your future wife or fiance is watching right now, would you, would you want to tell her anything right now? And Cody Rhodes just looked at him like he was stupid. For real, I think Cody Rhodes should have slapped him. Uh, after that, would have been pretty funny if he would have did that. But uh, yeah, Cody Rhodes just left. Uh, he was escorted out of the building by some security. And then, uh, but of course, they announced that Edge would be returning next week for Raw. That, that's that's interesting, you know, like to see Edge come back. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, looking forward to that. And then we had the main event, which was oh, did I mention? The Daniel Bryan, no, I didn't. Uh, earlier in the show, um, Daniel Bryan was backstage, and Big Show came back there and confronted him, and said basically that he didn't want to do the match, and you know that you know it's out of his hands. And Daniel Bryan told Big Show that he would beat him, like he, he he said he would beat him, just like he beat him for his first world championship, and and then he just left out on him. So that brings us to the the main event, Big Show versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, Big Show during this match was very reluctant to fight Daniel Bryan, where Daniel Bryan was, you know, he kept kept coming at the Big Show, he was throwing elbows and kicks and strikes, and Big Show was still like reluctant to fight him. He said, you know, he kept saying stuff like, "I don't want to do this," you know, "they make me do this. It's out of my hands. I don't want to hurt you," and uh, you know, basically, I uh, will overpower Daniel Bryan whenever you know Daniel Bryan would get too aggressive, and you know, uh, Daniel Bryan got him down a couple times and. Uh, Big Show powered his way out of pinfall attempts, and then Big Show kind of got a little fed up, gave Dan Bryan a couple slaps to the chest, uh, kind of manhandled Dan Bryan a little bit, and geared up to give Dan Bryan a knockout punch, and then he decided to change his mind, and he started to walk away. He attempted to walk away, and Triple H and The Shield came out, and then um, True H told told Big Show to get back in the ring, and Big Show said no, and The Shield jumped in and started beating down Daniel Bryan. Then uh, uh, Triple H made Big Show get back in the ring. He told Big Show to knock out Daniel Bryan, and Big Show said no, he wouldn't do it. He got out of the ring, and uh, Triple H was saying that, you know, I don't want to do this. Don't make me do this. And then Stephanie comes back out, and she's like, "Show this is for your family. You got to do this, blah, blah, blah. He gets back in the ring. Triple H is just like, now do what I told you, knock him out. And Big Show punch, balls up his fist like he's about to punch Triple H. And Stephanie jumps in front of him and is like, this is for your family and all this stuff like that. And um, Big Show starts crying and he's like, I don't want to do this. And he, he's on the ropes, just sad and crying and stuff. I'm like, do it, do it. And, uh, st and then he just turns around and knocks Daniel Bryan out. Um, yep. That's what it does. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and the two ways, Stephanie, they kind of smile. They're happy about it. Big Show jumps out of the ring. He's walking away. And Stephanie and two ways kind of comfort him a little bit. They tell him, you know, you did the right thing. You know, this is good. And then uh, Randy Orton comes out and uh, he, he walks up to the ring and he puts his foot on Daniel Bryan's chest and raises the championship. And that's how Raw concludes. Um... I think I think it was a good show. Um, I mean, it's kind of the same kind of things been happening the last three weeks since SummerSlam. Uh, you know, Dan Bryan getting getting beat down pretty badly, and just getting embarrassed, and the whole WWE locker room pretty much getting embarrassed. Um, I think it's still cool. I like it. I like what they're doing. I like the fact that Dan Bryan's getting spotlighted. I like the fact that they're focusing on WWE's like most talented, in my opinion, talented wrestlers, you know, like Dolph Ziggler, and CM Punk, and Dan Bryan's. So I, I think the direction that WWE is going in right now is, is great, absolutely great. I hope Cena stays out for another year. 
I'm not looking forward to him coming back and tapping out Daniel Bryan. But um, hopefully, you know, um, the WWE stays in this direction, man, like and doesn't drop the ball. You know, only the future can tell what's going to happen and how things are going to play out. But, I mean, I'm really enjoying the WWE right now. I'm enjoying the WWE television, you know. Last week on Raw, they had a Dan Bryan and a, and a gauntlet match, you know, against the Shield. So, Dan Bryan, he's he's one of those wrestlers that always performs, man, when he's, when he's up to the task. And even tonight with the Big Show, even though it was a short match, it wasn't really a match match. I still thought, you know, the whole thing was kind of, like, very entertaining. And, I, I mean, I'm just enjoying what they're doing right now. Um, so, yeah. Um, thanks for watching, man. Appreciate y'all checking me out. Watch my videos. Um, stay tuned. Stay subscribed. Uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button. Share the videos. And I'll see you next time.